Hey guys, and welcome back to Castle Crush. And today I just wanted to do kind of a commentary here about the spiked statue and why it's one of my favorite cards and, you know, why you might like it too. Now, I'm not trying to say it's one of the best cards in the game necessarily, but, you know, I found it to be very useful. It certainly doesn't fit in any or every strategy, um, but this might be one of several videos I could do you know, a little bit more of like an in-depth, you know, talk about certain cards and, you know, my experiences with them. And, you know, the Spiked Statue has been one of my most used cards because I run two of them in my main deck here that I use or have been using for pretty much most of the time I've been back in Castle Crush. And it's just such an invaluable card at times because the spiked statue one hit from the reaper eliminates the reaper not necessarily in early castles um, but if you have it leveled up enough one hit will eliminate the reaper which is a big deal because it takes away like arguably the most powerful card one of the most powerful cards or finishing cards in rushing decks and it just can eliminate it and by running two of them in this deck you know i have a lot of countering power to reaper decks and i think you'll see several times at least in this video i get some really nice uh moves on reapers and the thing is you can play it right in front of the reaper which gives your po your opponent very little time to react since the reaper only needs to hit it once at least at my card level and castle level it usually needs to only hit it once to go down so that's a big deal it can definitely throw off your opponent's entire strategy and because you can play it so instantly what you can do is you you know you can get rid of the reaper before they have time to get the protection combo in not the protection costs that much but because you know rushing decks are such an early you know mana sort of strategy oftentimes you can get it in that way um another real good use is against storm elementals and you'll see that um the spike statue is a great counter to an early like a early played storm elemental um sometimes like they can get the storm elemental out before you can get the spike statue out but if they play it a little bit late, like they play some cards and then they play the Storm Elemental, like you're going to be in great shape because you can instantly play the Spike Statue to counter it. And if you get it right away, like two hits from the Storm Elemental is all you need to get rid of it. And even if the Storm Elemental is larger by the time you get it out there, you can still use other cards behind the, the uh, spike statue to wear it down and it still gives you a real good chance to try and eliminate that so again right here quickly getting rid of the reaper and that was kind of crazy because I actually used the lightning on a pirate but I was just thinking to myself and I was like well the pirate in you know, the early game strategy, that's kind of a key card for them. If a Russian get deck gets ahead of you, you want to be able to eliminate any cards you possibly can from their stack. And the pirate was kind of an important card at that point. So I just felt like I had to get rid of it and it ended up paying off. The demon is also a good card, but in this particular video, we're talking about the Spiked Statue. And obviously the Spiked Statue is also a great counter to Skeleton decks. If your opponent tries to use Boneyard Cannon Shot, you're going to be all set to try and counter it. So really, Spiked Statue is a very versatile card. And it has a lot of good uses. It also has good synergy, for example, with my Shaman. I can play the Shaman behind it and 
or I can walk the shaman across the entire board without them knowing what to play and then once they eliminate the other lanes I can then play the spike statue in front of the shaman. It works well for a lot of situations. There are so many good uses for this card I can go on and on. It can eliminate a demon. If your opponent plays a demon to counter something you played you can play a spike statue back to eliminate the demon. Um, depends what card levels you have but for me it eliminates the demon and it gets you positioning so it works for that it can also work well against a hollow knight it won't get rid of the hollow knight by itself necessarily but it'll put the hollow knight in a weakened position and if you have something like a shaman or a ranged card you can play it behind that to really put the uh, hollow knight in jeopardy and I've just found it's a good counter to a lot of different things. It can get rid of like a warrior. The spike statue is a very solid card that has a lot of different uses to counter whatever your opponent might play that's a melee card. And even if it's not a melee card, you can use it to block like an archer queen to get some other card like if they try to play an Archer Queen to counter like a Valkyrie I played, I can play the Spike Statue in front of it. It works as a regular statue as well, so... Extremely useful. Right here you can see countering the Demon. And then they try to use a Black Witch on it. I don't know why, but... Obviously, though, the, I mean, I guess, what weakness does it really have? The weakness to the Spiked Statue is obviously going to be a ranged card. The Shaman takes it out pretty quick. You can use a Demon on it as well. But what I mean by that is using the special ability. Uh, if you use the special ability, then it's okay. If you don't use the special ability on the Spiked Statue, then the Demon will lose to it. Obviously, the stronger melee cards can sort of power through it, but honestly, the Spike Statue is just, I mean, it's such a great defensive card, and the fact that it can counter skeleton decks, um, as well as like cannon shot decks, well, like boneyard decks, I should say, and rushing decks, that's just really, really powerful. And it gives you the ability to actually kind of counter different things rather than just only being good against particular decks. But just having the ability to stop my opponent's push and really buy myself some time while doing damage to their cards is really, really useful. And I can use it to block. Like right here, using it to block in front of the Black Knight. Because if you have it in front of the Black Knight, like they basically can't really necessarily touch the Black Knight as easily. And, or whatever you play it in front of. And that makes it very hard to stop. So, sometimes I like to do, I like to try and get like the Black lane, black Knight in one lane. And then have the other lane be like, Spike Statue with Shaman behind it. And that's a really com, really difficult like two combination to stop. And usually when they do stop it, I've done a bunch of damage to their castle by that point. So... I personally think the Spike Statue is one of my favorite cards in the game just because it's super versatile. And it's pretty much like my number one... One of my number one counters to whatever my opponent plays. Especially with this deck. Like, to counter what my opponent plays, it's pretty much either like... There's a very good chance it's either... The demon or the spike statue if it's an early game push like usually it's one of those two cards that i like to use to get the job done but i was just having fun here in these matches really just just trying to play and play pretty well i haven't done much uh trophy pushing this season mostly just because there's not really any point I mean, there's not really any point in doing it, like, early. I can push through the entire... 
this entire part of the league pretty much just in like a couple of days at the end. So I don't really need to spend a ton of time actually ranking up trophies super early. And you can see for the sake of the video here, I went and used the uh, Spike Statue again there on the Reaper. Kind of throwing their whole strategy off a little bit. And then saving the Valkyrie. Now, I'm not using this to necessarily mean you have to use a Spike Statue in your deck, obviously. There are many other great strategies. But I do think the Spike Statue has a lot of usability. And I didn't realize that when it first came out. It's just... It's ended up being such a versatile card. And I just can't emphasize that enough even. And, you know, the Spike Statue, it just gives you time to be able to figure out... How you're going to counter your opponent's strategy and block damage there's so many things like it's almost overpowered how versatile that card is i mean i can really not uh, emphasize enough how powerful the ability to just one hit a reaper before your opponent can really even counter the move is i mean it's really really great right here i actually didn't use the spike statue initially against the uh, storm elemental but as you'll see, I do end up playing it here. They swap lanes, but, you know, it forced them to swap lanes. And I realized it probably wasn't that useful right where it was there because of the Shaman. But then once they played the Reaper again, see, I one hit the Reaper, got rid of one of their more dangerous cards. Unfortunately, here, the Shaman was a big problem. And I was trying to find a way to get rid of that damage. And I eventually realize that I need to get the Shaman taken out there. Uh, unfortunately here, the problem was really the Ice Elemental. Uh, because I actually managed to stop this lane. And as you'll see here, I have two good cards to clear with actually. And I managed to get rid of... It's possible if I'd waited a second longer... I could have saved that match. I don't know because I might have been able to for the fire elemental to hit the reaper and then the demon would have caught the ice elemental. But they played the angel so quickly. I don't know. It might have caught the angel. Um, that was an unfortunate loss. But I still felt like the spike statue was really helpful there. I used it like what twice against reapers in that match. They would have won much sooner if I hadn't had it. Um, it's very hard to stop rushing decks but the spike statue is really one of the best cards in the entire game for stopping uh, rushing decks. Partly because it's lower mana than the Inferno. Obviously Inferno right there would have been great, but you know, again, Inferno is a higher mana cost. And right here, I just decided to go all in on this stack because with rushing decks, the biggest thing is you really just have to get rid of as much of their dangerous cards as possible. Um, because if you can get rid of them, then they're going to be behind. And right there, I just knew I had to try and get any advantage I could to get rid of those cards. And Archer's Tribe is another one that this deck in particular struggles against. Sometimes just because I don't have a lot of um, cards that play in multiple lanes. So Archer's Tribe can be bad for me, but right there, I kind of just had the momentum swing so I was able to make it happen and then just ignored the Archer Queen. So that's going to do it for this video. So uh, I hope that this was a little bit more informative about why I use the Spike Statue and why you might want to use the Spike Statue. It doesn't work for every deck by any means but it is a pretty good card I think. It's very versatile and it works well against rushing decks as well as skeleton decks. So it gives you the ability to counter those decks, which is pretty big because you got to be able to be good against certain type of decks, especially certain meta decks. So leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments and what other types of content I should create. Maybe subscribe if you're new to my channel. And thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for more videos.